Welcome back folks. We're, today we're going to do part two of our series on showers and staying clean if you live in a car, van, or SUV, even an RV. If you have a van like Deborah does, then you have a built-in shower enclosure in the back door. We've talked about how to actually take the shower, but now this is where will you take a shower. And Deborah, you've discovered you have this uh, shower enclosure right here at the back of your van. Yeah. How do you turn this into a shower enclosure? Well, thanks to you, Bob, I learned how to do this. I'm going to show you my tools. Um, I start with a pole and bungee cord and really then just some spring, spring, clips. spring clips and a mat and a tarp. That's it. So it's really easy. And you want me to go ahead and show them? Yeah. Okay. Just really simple stuff. It is. It has to be for me. <laughs> so you just put the pole up here, and that keeps the doors from blowing in on you. But like you taught me, uh, to keep them from them blowing out away and everything collapsing, then find find a way, uh, find the right size bungee cord, and find a way, and now it's stable. So if we if we move it around, not too much. It it, it will come undone. It will if you do it more than that. It it, it will because I was testing it and I bonked myself on the head. But it would take a lot of both ways to to knock it down. Under any normal circumstances, this is going to work just fine. Absolutely, absolutely. Even even in winds, because now we have to add the tarp, and that gives it even more security. So right, it it would stabilize it even more. Yeah, right? yeah. But I did do that to test it and. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is really fancy high-tech equipment. Where yeah. did you get a dowel just like that? Uh, I think that dowel cost me a dollar fifty at Home Depot. <laughs> well, I guess you, most of us can afford that. Yeah, yeah. and I, I cut a little bit off of the end of it, and that was that. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, and and uh, uh, th this came from a batch of bungee cords at Walmart. Good. So. Okay, so so far it's not too terribly expensive. No, that's it. Yep. I already had that and just had to go buy that. And then right now I'm kind of on a on a slope. And so I have this little folding stool, excuse me. Um, and so I'll use it. Uh, but the first thing I do is this is just my yoga mat. Do, um, out here you taught me well to try to make everything have a dual purpose. Or, right. And so I use that to stand on and just throw it down. And because I'm on a slope right now to put that tarp up, I'm going to use a safety stool. Right. So that, and so then I'm just ready to clamp the tarp up and over and then I'll be set. I will say that um, I started off by putting another tarp over the bed to protect it and all that. And it's just so totally a waste of time and, and not necessary. This is my little shower bag that if I go to a truck stop or something, I take in with me. And so I just get it out of the drawer and I set it up there and I can shower with one gallon of water. But if I'm going to do my hair, um, it, I use another two. So out here, a lot of people think that's pretty wasteful, but uh, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do use three gallons of water when I, I shower and wash my hair. Oh, that's so. horrible. I know. That is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> if you lived in a house and you took a shower, what would it be? 20, 30, 40 gallons it, minimum? Exactly. I mean, and I think even I read something about if you, even if you have one of those turn off on nozzles and in, in, in sticks and stones home, um, you, it's still 12 to 15. So right. three is not too bad, but no. out here I know a lot of people go, oh, three gallons. <laughs> so, but that, that's all I need um, is all of this equipment and we're ready to put the tarp up. Okay, now this must be some very special high-tech tarp. Uh, it is, it's a five by seven real cheap uh, blue tarp at Walmart. <laughs> okay, so it's probably five, ten dollars at Walmart. Um, I, I honestly, I don't remember, but yeah, not, not, not you know my budget, so yeah. not not much at all. And then th this is um, this is how I keep them stored. But this is just that size uh, spring clip, and I just need five of them. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I get those ready. I would just I had them like that to show how to store them. Okay. 
Um, I'm actually not sure how you want me to do this, just like I normally do. Yeah, well, if you if I weren't here, if the camera and all those, there's nobody out there. Pretend they're not there. Yeah, you, you well, can't you be do? out there if I'm going to shower. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I uh, just unfold it and get started, and I find the middle, which is fairly easy. Sorry about all the noise. And um, I just grab the middle. And I step up on my stool and hold on to something, and I come up and over. And then once I take it up and over, you're not going to be able to, to see. But I take it up and over, and I attach it to here with oh. spring clips. One, two, three. And then I do uh, another spring clip here and here. And that's all I do anymore. OK. And I'm holding on to the middle so I don't lose the uh, it. Hi everybody. So what I've done is I've just brought it up and over and I've done my two spring clips there. I step here and I do my spring clip there. And so that's set. And notice how it covers the windows too. I, I would also probably have Reflectix in the windows. But, um, so you don't that's, want someone looking in. I'd rather not. Yeah. <laughs> and I would have my side door shut and my Reflectix on the front. Uh, so I would already be set up for privacy. Um, and then um, we may want to go back out and so I can show how I secure it to the doors. And then I'm ready to shower. Okay, let's do that. Okay. So I just um, I pull it over. And because sometimes it gets windy, I've learned to just fold that in like that, and boom, that's done. And believe it or not, that, that holds it. It's great. And so I come over here and I do the same thing. Sorry that it's so dirty. I had it on the ground earlier. I'll, I'll wash it while it's up. And then I do the same thing here. And I now have a shower stall. Right. So, and then I just step back under and shower. Right. And wash my hair. Right. So. Um, and now, uh, it doesn't go down very low. People could see you in here. Well, uh, they can see my legs. Right. Um, so if you if that bothered you, I guess get a bigger tarp. Right. You can just get a little <laughs> tarp. Let me just step in and you can see how much right. you can see. So that, that stays down. And... I would move that to the side. So, is anything showing that shouldn't be? No, nope, no. Nope. And like you said, you are in a hill, so we're lower than you, we would normally be. Yeah. Okay. And then you would just shower however you choose to shower, and you just use three one-gallon jugs. I do. I, I've got uh, my, in that shower basket, I've got my uh, soap and and I, I still use, I know a lot of people out here don't, but I still use the traditional um, fragrant body wash and shampoo and conditioner and I use shaving gel and uh, I, I'm, I'm still total girl on that. I haven't gone to being a nature conservative on that, any of that yet. That's and, okay. And so I, it, this, it, this just gives me my moment of a day spa in the desert or the forest or wherever we happen to be camped and, and it works great for me. And I know that at one time you did try out solar shower bags. I, I did and, and um, the particular, the, twice, uh, I borrowed one from you one time and then I, I borrowed one from my friends James and Kendall. And the, the one, uh, at least I, I, it had a spigot for off on and that just didn't work for me. Plus my van, uh, I have two van, uh, fans and the hood is right in the middle and so it kept sliding off on the side and uh, that that just uh, didn't work for me but I noticed in your last video that you have a new solar bag that has a big loop that I might could attach to the doors um, and so I, I might try that out but uh, this this is hard to beat it's easy it's fast I already have all that stuff with me I don't have to carry anything extra um, and I set the water out on a on my black uh, doggy mat uh, in the sun, and the water gets fine. And if it doesn't, like you said in your video, I 
I warm it up and um, it's just easy and I, I like simple and easy. Right, it's <laughs> really helpful for you. Yeah. Uh, and I should say that we're going to do a uh, video, our third in this series, this will be a three part series, will be we're going to wash your dog. Yeah, barely gets a bath. <laughs> yeah, and uh, just so you can actually see something being washed and we're going to compare, test and compare uh, four different methods of uh, pumps. Uh, let's see, two mechanical pumps, uh, a shower bag, and a a pressure pump you step on. So we're going to compare four of those. But today we're just showing you enclosures, yeah. and this is a super cheap, super simple stuff enclosure. you already have on hand. You have it uh, on hand. Quick and easy. You can make this as long as as you're comfortable with. Right. Um, it, you know, usually I'm not on a slope, and usually I don't have a camera <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> filming me. Uh, so this is more than secure enough. For me but you can adjust it however you want and who knows after we do that video i may be buying me a pump or something but right. uh, this has worked for a year and i'm uh, it's great yeah good and you know just anything this simple we all should know about and so uh, and i i don't get any credit for discovering this so uh, uh, everything i know about van, van dwelling i've usually learned from someone else and my friend wayne showed me this oh, and uh, there you when go. Uh, when he showed me this i said this is the smartest thing i ever saw and as simple as simple can be yeah and then you showed me so thank yeah. you wayne <laughs> and now you all get to know yeah and tell your friends so we will next we'll take a look at now if you don't have a van what do you do if you have a car you know back doors you don't want to this won't work for you or 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 something else we're going to look at shower enclosures next so let's go look at those so we just saw how you can use the back doors of your van to make a very good shower enclosure for very cheap and very easy but what if you don't have a van? What if you have a car? What if you have an RV or you live in a tent? Uh, then you can go to shower enclosures. This is one. Uh, I've been using shower enclosures for quite a while. Uh, this will be the seventh Rubber Tramp Rendezvous in January in Quartzsite, Arizona. And in each one, I have set up a shower enclosure for people who come in cars uh, or tents and and or, or even vans and don't have a place to use the restroom. They need some privacy So I set up a shower uh, enclosure to use their bathroom uh, Go potty and so I've owned quite a few of them. This is the latest one. I've owned it's an Ozark trail from Walmart uh, My experience has been pretty favorable towards Walmart products I haven't owned this one long enough to give you a, a lot of feedback on its quality or how it will hold up but I think I think based just on my experience that it'll be a good one. I've learned a little bit about shower tents over the years and I don't see any obvious design flaws that would let me, keep me from recommending this to you. It's 45, 50 bucks at Walmart. We'll set it up and show it to you and, and you'll see it. Uh, let me tell you about some of the other shower enclosures that I've owned, um, but while, while we're getting this set up. Uh, the first one I owned was a Stan Sport. I'm not a fan of Stan Sport products. Most of them I've seen are not very good quality. Uh, I was surprised by the quality of the, stand, the, the uh, shower, the potty tent. It was 45 or 50 bucks. I set it up for the first two years of the RTR and we had some tremendous winds. I mean, the biggest windstorms I've ever seen and it, inst it withstood them all. I was really very impressed with it. Uh, at the end of the second year, the zipper failed. Uh, but again, I you know I wouldn't even hold that against it. It was incredibly bad conditions. You wouldn't a, a lifetime of bad conditions. So I didn't even hold it against it. The that the tent the zipper failed. I bought a second one for the third RTR. It failed. The zipper failed on it uh, after the uh, after the second year. It had a design flaw, and I won't try and explain it to you without the tent in my in front of me to see it. It would be hard to do that when you assembled it, it made it extremely different to disassemble, difficult to disassemble it. In fact, I could not get it to take it, take it apart, so I literally cut one of the seams to get it to come undone. It was, where it assembled at the top was too much pressure. That's as simple as I can make it. And I literally had to cut it apart and, and, and jury rig it to work, to make it more last the second year. I wouldn't recommend the stand sport for that reason. I, it was surprisingly good quality but uh, I wouldn't recommend it.
Okay, so the second uh, shower tent that I owned for the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous wasn't a shower tent. In fact, it would be pretty difficult to take a shower in it, but it worked fine uh, to go to the bathroom, which is what really all I wanted it to do. And it was a Guide Gear TP tent. And I was pretty pleased with it. In fact, I still have it. Um, I was up, I believe, for two years. Uh, and again, through some horrendous winds, I loaned it to a friend after the RTR who set it up, and I saw that tent last through 50 mile an hour winds. Again, I was surprised by the quality. It was a $100 tent. It was a TP, literally, it was a TP, and so it shed the wind much better. That's why I wanted it to shed wind. The desert just has horrendous winds at times. Uh, and it did. It did really well. It had one steel center pole that came out, and you staked it. I was actually pretty pleased with that tent and would probably recommend it. Uh, you just can't leave them up in these winds. You just can't think any cheap tent will endure the winds in the desert. Um, and it, the zipper failed after the first year, and then I set it up after the RTR for a friend, and she had it up for a long time. And I don't even hold, again, I don't hold that against it. Uh, it's incredibly difficult circumstances with that wind and so I don't hold against it that the tent failed that the zipper failed I set it up the second year and jury rigged with some velcro how to close the door so if you came and the door was velcroed closed you knew not to go in it worked quite well as a potty tent you could shower in it although I believe it had a floor and that would make it almost unusable as a shower tent if you sat you could not stand you could get inside and stoop uh, and and do your business on the five gallon bucket which I put in my shower tents and so it wasn't bad and I would even actually set it up again as a shower as a potty tent only but not really what you want as a shower tent uh, finally uh, last year uh, the sixth year of the RTR I bought a Texport deluxe shower tent it was the most expensive I believe it was about 110 I am extremely pleased with it. We didn't have any bad windstorms, fortunately, last year, so uh, it hasn't withstood any horrendous winds. I can't tell you how it did from that. In normal use, a lot of use, uh, after the first year, uh, I would say it was like new. So far, I'm very pleased with it. Um, I'll, I'll know better after my second year of, of using it uh, at the RTR, how it'll hold up if we get any winds, if we get any lot of rain. Very pleased with it. So far, I would recommend the tech sport. You buy cheap stuff and you get, they fail. And so, um, what are you going to say? You just get them and you do your best. Uh, now most people are taking these tents out for a week or two a year, maybe a month, maybe, and setting them up in good weather in the National Forest. Again, if you set these up in the National Forest, they'll last indefinitely because you don't get those kind of winds in the National Forest. And that's what most people are doing. I don't hold it against a tent that it doesn't stand up against the desert. It's a cheap tent. It's not going to do it. Uh, you'd have to always remember to take it down in the wind and then set it back up afterwards for your use. And if you do that, even in the desert, they'll last. Although they're all cheap nylon and the sun will kill them. If you put it up for a year in the desert, the sun will kill it. Uh, that's the UV destroys nylon. Uh, so. There's my, been my experience, and that's why I so strongly recommend, if you have a van, to set up the, the across the back doors. It's cheap. It's a cheap. It's it's a five dollar tarp. That's all you need. And if it wears out, you throw it away, and you get a new five dollar tarp. No investment, no loss. So, but the shower tents do work, and anywhere but in the desert, they work quite well. Uh, and so, it's a very good option for you to consider up real quick and then we'll probably put it on fast forward and just uh, do speed demon through it so you don't have to endure it I mean it's just it's not much fun to watch these things going up just to show you an idea now I have not uh, I'm no expert on setting this up so I'm probably not the one to be doing this this is my first time actually we set it up at the RTR and Flagstaff but I had friends do it and I didn't do it I've looked at the instructions I've messed with it a bit so uh, I've got an idea what goes on, and their ball tents are basically similar, but I have not set this up before. I suspect it'll be pretty easy. I do know it has four of these, and they go together. At any point here, we're just going to zoom through this, and you'll lose my audio, and that's fine. Hub. 
can see a hub. I really like this. It's attached. I'm not going to lose it. Um, should make it very simple. It's got little clips. Once they go in, I think they'll hold tight. So far, pretty, pretty self-explanatory and easy. This is nearly universal among all these tents. Just a, a pin that goes up inside. I think that's it. I think it's basically just done. Well, you know, then these tents are also similar that once you've set up a couple, you've got the basic idea for them. Okay, so that was it. Again, very first time I've ever set it up. I haven't looked at the instructions. Who needs instructions? I'm a man. I like this zipper. It's not under any pressure. The problems I've seen with nearly all zippers is they get under pressure and the pressure just eventually rips them apart. And uh, I'm not seeing that here. So there you go. And it does have a floor, which I do like. And it looks like it's sewn in. Let me get this over a little bit for you better. And we can pick this up and move it. And of course you'd want to any kind of wind you'd want to um, stake out the stakes. So um, it does on the floor, it does actually have a floor which would be nice uh, and you can see it's just mesh. The idea being that um, when, when you use it as a shower the water can easily just run out. Um, no harm in there being a floor in here, you'd have to like, let it dry before you were done. Uh, it does have a nice uh, tent of a window here, get a little breeze, no one can see in. Uh, it has a completely open mesh and it does, and uh, these are nice, these are nice little touches. And it does come with a rain fly, I doubt if, oh, you know what, this, this is to hold a uh, shower bag. And it might, these are solid, these are really solid uh, uh, poles. This very well might help handle the 20 to 40 pounds of a shower bag. Uh, all in all, I'm impressed. I think it's quite a good one. My impression of the most Ozark Trails Walmart product uh, is pretty high. Okay, uh, that should be the end of this video on how uh, shower enclosures for tents, for uh, van dwellers or our car, car dwellers or even uh, RVers, uh, tent dwellers. And so I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something from it. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, like us on YouTube, and tell your friends all about us. We hope to uh, inspire and educate about how to be a nomad. Okay, thanks much for watching, and we'll see you next time.